Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Today we unveil some new toys that I have purchased for the channel. We'll start things off with a graphics card. I have purchased a GeForce RTX 2060. Yes, <laughs> all that hype and then we find out it's 2060. I know, not a super, just a 2060, um, but there is method to the madness. So the reason why I purchased this product so late in the 20 series life cycle is because I needed a GPU that will serve as our mid-range GPU, seeing as the replacement was, well, the RX 480 I've used for so long is getting a bit old, not really a mid-range card anymore. This fills that void. It's a step above what our current generation cards are considered mid-range. So, you know, what you'd be buying now that's considered mid-range is probably a 1660 Super or an RX 5600, something along those lines. Um, but 2060 sort of gives us that ability to have room to grow. So a year or two from now, that card is still going to be performing as well as the whatever the current generation mid-range cards are. So that is why I have purchased it. So it gives us that sort of long term. Uh, I'm getting value for money, getting videos for money because, you know, spending $500 on a graphics card now, finally make three videos out of it. Well, that's a very damn expensive video to make. So uh, hopefully I get a lot of content out of that card. Now, moving on uh, to much cheaper things. We have a Ryzen 3 3300X. Yes, I could have gone Ryzen 5 or an i5, uh, but I decided to go with this for a few reasons. Unlike the i5 and the Ryzen 5, it is quite cheap. That cost me 230 Australian dollars. Uh, if you convert that to US, you're probably looking at 150, 160 US. Not an overly expensive CPU, um, very affordable. And it does another thing. It gives us sort of a reference point of what happens if you buy a modern $200 CPU or an old i7. Because remember, on the used market, for some reason, an i7 still costs a fortune, even, even if it's an i7-3770. I'm pretty sure people are still paying $100, $150 for those ancient CPUs that are eight years old now. Um, so this CPU gives me a lot of scope for comparing against older CPUs. And it also gives us a good reference point of how modern CPUs are performing. Because remember, despite being a cheap CPU, this is still getting 90, 95% of the performance of the modern Definitely Ryzen 5s, probably 90 to 85% of the performance of the modern i5 10600K. But remember, this is cheap. This is what people on a budget are buying. So um, it's very relevant to the content I'm making for this channel, hence the reason for purchasing it. Now, we say budgets, but I just throw that all in the window. I spent $125 on a SSD. Uh, it is a one terabyte SSD, so it's a bit of a jump forward. Um, Technically, yes, a hard drive is still okay for gaming. You don't need an SSD for gaming yet. Um, but the reason that I have purchased one is because time is inevitably money for me. Um, well, not really money, but my time is valuable. Um, and the more time I can save when I'm benchmarking or just doing literally any sort of content related to a video, um, if I can save time, I will do it. And this enables me to save time. So that is why we've purchased it. Purchased. That is why we've purchased it. So, now, swinging back to the cheap end of the things, I have bought a B5, uh, sorry, a B450 motherboard, not a B550, because I couldn't justify spending 230 Australian dollars on a motherboard. Yes, B550 is great, and for my editing rig, I would absolutely consider it, but for a benchmarking rig, when it's a Ryzen 3, as long as the VRM has a heatsink on it, that's basically all I need, and that's what that motherboard has. VRM is cooled with a heatsink. Um, it'll probably do anything up to a Ryzen 5. I probably wouldn't put a Ryzen 7 in that motherboard. It's maybe a little too weak on the VRM for that, but it will suffice. Uh, it will take the two 16 gig DIMMs that I have that are 3200 speed, uh, and it will run pretty much any graphics card I throw at it. So that's all it needs to do, uh, and that is, well, that's the hardware. So let's put it in a computer. Okie dokie, so this here is the chassis we will be using for all the parts, uh, which are off camera. Uh, now, 
this used to host the Ryzen 5 1600. Uh, obviously, the main board and all the sort of the basics have been removed, but all the cabling is still in there. Power supply is all there. Um, you know, SATA cables, what have you. I've also left the cooler in there. Um, so I will use the AIO to cool the um, the Ryzen 3, despite being completely overkill for that CPU, uh, seeing as it runs so efficiently. Um, so let's start putting some stuff in this case. Okay, so my plan hasn't gone exactly the way I wanted it to. What I wanted to be able to do was just to sort of reclip everything back in, but it seems that the tolerances of the old motherboard versus this one are very different. So, uh, things like the 24 pin no longer reaches. Uh, so we're gonna have to find a way to sort of give that more room. The um, cooler, thankfully, does reach. So that's a Fantastic positive. Um, yeah, we're going to have to reroute the cables. So unfortunately, I was hoping to not have to remanage all these cables, but it seems like I am not going to get my way and I'm going to have to do it the proper way. Okay, so it does work. That is fantastic news. So uh, I will install some games on this because I have indeed removed the hard drive that was in the system uh, and it also hasn't been fired up in a very long time so I'd say it'd be out of date anyway. So I'm gonna fix this up and I'm gonna run some benchmarks and then I will be back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is benchmark time. So running through the results, we will go with CSGO first. It's a bit brutal. Uh, here's the chart. That happened. Um, so bottom result is the Ryzen 5 1600 with a GTX 1080. This was the best performing result I ever had on the chart. Uh, and the scaling was set up as such. So when I plugged in the number of 327 average frames per second, um, the Ryzen 3 was off the scale. Uh, so I had to adjust the scaling of the benchmark. That is how good I think this CPU is. Um, my expectations of what a good, good CPU was coming into this has been absolutely flawed. Um, this Ryzen 3 3300X, based on this one result, uh, is performing incredibly well. Um, so green bar is average, yellow bar is 1% lows, red bar is 0.1% lows, uh, and I mean, yeah, that, that I don't, don't need to say much else. Next up, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So this is a game uh, that is a bit more GPU bound. 
Uh, now we can see that the Ryzen 5 is still struggling behind. Uh, now, I believe the 1080 is supposed to be faster than the 2060. Um, remembering this is not a 2060 Super and it's also not a fancy overclock variant or anything. It's a plain Jane vanilla 2060, so it's uh, one of the bottom of the barrel ones. Um, but with the Ryzen 3, it's outperforming the 1080 uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if the 1080 was bottlenecked by the Ryzen 5 1600. Um, so it will be good to update these charts with the Ryzen 3 CPU and I'll get a bit further into reviewing this part. Uh, and yeah, I mean performance, great, uh, fantastic. Um, these, get, these titles are all benchmarked at 1080p. I don't actually have a better monitor than 1080p so I can't benchmark it at higher resolution. Um, not that you really want to go higher anyway, uh, at least for this game because 75 FPS in a 1080p is uh, not... It's a bit more of a cinematic experience, but Assassin's Creed games are not known for high frame rate uh, experiences, so, you know, there is that. We will move on. Next is Dirt Rally 2.0. This is a game I frequently play. Uh, I have a racing wheel and a proper sim setup and everything for it. Uh, and Ryzen 3 3300X beats out the, um, yeah, beats out the Ryzen 5 option. 1% uh, and 0.1% lows are very close, um, but the average FPS is just so much better, so... Um, I will be interested to see whether it is genuinely the 26 is faster or yeah, the other way around. So it will be interesting to put the 1080 in the system and start benchmarking on it. Moving on, Cinebench single core. Uh, the reason why I did this instead of multi-core is because multi-core, uh, while it's great, we really want to see how this chip performs, uh, in, you know, single threaded applications as opposed to the previous Ryzen generations because Traditionally, that is where Ryzen was weak. And uh, this 3300X, um, just in this, obviously this one benchmark, uh, 498 versus 345, um, that's a pretty big jump. Um, doing some quick, mathema quick mathematics in my head, that looks like uh, 25 to 30% less performance from the Ryzen 5 1600 in single core. Now, I don't have the chart for it um, because I want to leave that for the full review of the CPU, but in uh, multi-core, it was almost a dead heat. So the Ryzen 3 pretty much matches or exceeds, can't remember which one it was, uh, the performance of the Ryzen 5 1600. So, modern four core, eight thread versus slightly older six core, 12 thread, it's, it's matching the performance. So Zen 2, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is a fantastic architecture. Now, that leads me into my conclusion. Uh, there's a little bit to wrap up in this one. So, we'll start with the CPU, 30, Ryzen 3 3300X, I am very, very, very impressed with this CPU. Uh, in my opinion, uh, and based on my experience, this is the fastest CPU I have ever used, um, with no exception. Uh, now, fast does not quantify ability to do lots of things, so if I was to try and do video editing on this compared to my editing workstation, we'd be having a different conversation. But for the general user, um, I'm talking you know, web browsing or gaming or just sort of basic workstation use, uh, this CPU is definitely the fastest CPU I've ever used. So it's a very quick performing system. Uh, I am very happy with it. Uh, now, there will be a full review coming on this CPU, so we'll come back to that in the video that comes soon after. Uh, GPU, RTX 2060. My opinion of it is far more positive than what it would have been. So I purchased it with the expectation of it becoming the sort of mid-range class GPU. Um, the reason for that being that as the NVIDIA 30 series comes out, the sort of, you know, 3060 and whatever have you, you know, the, the mid-range cards, the performance of the 2060 will probably um, slot in for whatever that 300, 400 Australian dollar um, in US dollars, probably looking at 200, 250 US dollars. Uh, it'll probably represent the performance of that graphics card whenever that new graphics card comes out. So, a bit of weird logic, but basically 2060, I'm expecting to represent mid-range gaming performance going forward. That was all I expected of it, uh, and I got more than I expected for. So the performance has been relatively close to what I've experienced with the 1080. I think if I put the 1080 in this system uh, with that 3300X, it's going to exceed the performance of the 2060, uh, just based on what I've read online about reviews. From some time ago, um, I don't think there's been a modern sort of comparison in uh, 2020, but I can't imagine it's changed much. Uh, and yeah, uh, I 
haven't tried DXR yet, I will have to do that in the review of the 2060, which will be coming. Um, and the last component that I purchased, uh, obviously there is the motherboard, but it's a motherboard, they're not that interesting. It works, there you go. Um, that's your review of the motherboard. Uh, I can't bother doing anything more than that. It's a motherboard, you plug components into it, and generally they're more important. Um, anyway, SSD, that was the last sort of major upgrade. So, one terabyte SSD in here. So this system is now 100% SSD based. Boot driver's SSD, game driver's SSD. So, I am extremely impressed with the performance. In fact, I will probably never buy another hard drive for a system again. Um, so, if you're building a gaming PC today and you can afford to buy a one terabyte hard drive, remember, a one terabyte hard drive as it stands currently is about 125 to 130 Australian dollars. US dollars, 90, 95, 85, somewhere around the region. So quite affordable. Um, it's a little bit more than a hard drive with obviously similar capacity, but you're not paying much more and the performance uh, difference is significant. Now, it does not give you more FPS. So that's not the benefit of it. If you're just after your FPS and every single dollar has to go into it, then yeah, okay, you can probably get away with the hard drive. However, if you value time, if you value quality of life, and you value, uh, well, just not waiting for things, then it makes a big difference. So, load times in games, slightly improved. But the big improvement was actually, of all things, download times. Sounds crazy, I know. So. I have a 500 meg internet connection. Using my regular gaming PC, which is off camera behind it, uh, it has a hard drive in it and has an i7-3770. When you download a game off Steam, and that game is 70, 80, 90 gig, like most modern titles are, it will rocket up to that 500 meg limit, uh, and it will download about three or four gig, and then it will hit a brick wall, and the performance will drop right off. If you go on Task Manager and look at what the computer's doing, you will see the disk usage is way up at 100%. And what is happening is Steam is downloading the game, trying to decompress that data it's download onto the hard drive and pull down more stuff. It seems to have to wait to finish decompressing a certain amount before it can download. So what happens in function is you will get your full 500 meg speed for the first gigabyte or two, and then you will get nothing. It won't download anything at all for another three or four minutes and then it will start again and then it'll bottleneck and it'll drop off so instead of taking two hours to download a hundred gig game like it should it will take three four five six hours to download that game because the uh, hard drive is just bottlenecked trying to decompress this data now that does not happen on this system this system downloaded the terabyte of games that I downloaded. So I downloaded some onto the OS drive and the rest onto the uh, game drive, the one terabyte SSD. And it took six hours to download just over a terabyte of games. Have a think about that. Yeah, that's insane, right? So I'm utterly impressed. SSDs will be going in every single system I can put them in now, um, not just for a boot drive, but for the whole lot. So uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, um, I now have a legitimate reason to never use a hard drive in a workstation. Again, they're still relevant in servers, but that's a whole nother discussion. So that is my thoughts. Thank you for watching. Uh, more content will be coming, so Ryzen 3 3300X review will be coming up shortly. The data is almost done, I just didn't want to give it all away in this video and extend it out too long. Uh, RTX 2060 review will be coming, I'll be comparing it to the 1080 and maybe against the 480 as well, just for shiggles, I guess. Uh, and I guess that is all for now. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comments down below if you've got any questions. Uh, there is the Discord server there if you want to ask me questions. Uh, I know I just said that about YouTube comments. I don't really pay much attention to YouTube comments. Um, if you want to get me, the best way to get me is on the Discord server, and I generally try to reply within about one or two days. So, um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.